life is the victory that he needs. But more Come on, declare that this morning. Worship is the key. Worship is my destiny. Worship is the victory that we need. The glory. Worship. Worship is the key. Worship is my destiny. Worship is the victory that we need. The glory. Come on, somebody just give him praise this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that, church. Come on. Worship is your key this morning. Worship brings the victory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody shout hallelujah.
our very closest friend a hand of praise this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you for being in this place, Lord. Your word says where two or three are gathered in your name that you're right here with us. So God, we acknowledge that your spirit, the Holy Spirit, is here with us today. And so God, we just honor you and we ask for you to have your way. Do the things that you want to do. Say the things that you want to say and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Slap somebody a high five and tell them it's good to be here. You can be seated this morning. You guys kind of just keep that going behind me there. I like it. I like it. Um, if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 37. Or you can stop playing, whatever. That's cool, too. <laughs> it sounded so good. And now it's gone. <laughs> Psalm 37, we're going to begin in verse 1 this morning. The uh, scriptures are on the screen for you. Uh, today, uh, we are going to finish up our series on increase. Uh, I really believe that that's the word for this year. And so we wanted to start off strong with uh, the focus of increase. And how many of you are believing for increase in your life? Raise your hand. And come on, just wave it to Jesus say, that's me, God. I, I want to increase. So Psalm 37, verse 1, we're going to finish up increase uh, this morning. It says, do not worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Verse number 3 says, trust in the Lord. Somebody say, trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. How many of you know somebody in your life that it seems like everything they touch, it succeeds? Uh, okay. Uh, how many of you, you see them on the news, you see them in the media. It seems like they're so wealthy. It seems like they just, they can't sneeze without making money, you know? Uh, hey, I wouldn't mind some of that you know and uh but we know people like that it seems like they're very successful in life and uh but sometimes I wonder God they don't live for you I do I tithe I give my offerings I try to live a lifestyle that's pleasing to you why is that kind of success following them instead of your people how many's ever thought that before you know, we're supposed to be blessed, we're supposed to uh, be prosperous, we're supposed to uh, have all this increase in our lives, but it seems like the increase sometimes goes to the world. But what God is showing us in this scripture is, don't worry about that because the success that they're experiencing only lasts, at the most, a lifetime. But the kind of prosperity, it says it causes you to prosper, the kind of prosperity that we are after lasts for an eternity. Uh, that's the kind of prosperity that I want. Look, I'm not after the BMWs and the, and the, and the, and the, and the watches and the designer clothes, and, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that stuff, but how many knows it's not about that stuff? It's not about the things that you can possess. It's not about the things that you can have. It's, it's about those treasures that we can store up for ourselves for all of eternity. And so uh, the God is telling us in this scripture, don't worry about uh, what people have or don't have and, and why success follows some and doesn't some don't worry about any of that because the prosperity that I want to bring you will never fade away and so that's what we're after that's the kind of increase that we're looking for we're looking for the increase that lasts for all of eternity verse 4 it says take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires how many of you have a desire this morning uh, how about a desire that has not been met yet? Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay. So I'm talking to a few this morning. Um, and this is going on talking about those who, have, who are very successful in this world, who may not be living for God. They may be investing. Hey, I know people who make uh, millions and billions of dollars who invest in things like Scientology. And, and I just sucked a mint down my throat. Never preach with a mint in your mouth. It's not a good idea. <clears throat> Whew. 
But I have minty fresh breath. So, you know, that's cool. So, yeah, I'm going to get this water. It's kind of stuck right there, it feels like. Hold on, sorry. That was not planned. Okay, where was I? Giving money to, to Scientology and things like that and, and, uh, and new ways of ener- en- energy and things like that. And yet we spend our time investing into the kingdom of God. And, uh, but really, how many of you know that all the stuff that they have, it's not fulfilling their heart's desire? Right? Because your heart's desire cannot be met by worldly things or possessions or stuff. Hey, it can bring you a little joy, but uh, it's not going to meet your heart's desire. Because let me explain your heart's desire is simply that this body that you have been given, that has been designed by God, was designed to house the Holy Spirit. So the only way that your heart's desires can truly be met is that your body, the temple, would be possessed and inhabited by the Holy Ghost. Amen? And so uh, they may have a lot of stuff. They may seem to be having a good time, but their heart's desire, I promise you, uh, if you look at their lifestyle, if you look at their life, they're not fulfilled. And what I believe God wants is for his people to walk and talk and live in fulfillment. And that fulfillment only comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And so we're not talking about uh, stuff fulfilling our heart's desires. We're not talking about things. We're talking about God fulfilling the desires of our heart. And we only, that only takes place is, the only way that can take place is if you take delight in the Lord. Okay, verse 5 says, commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Now, verse 7 is where we're going to land this morning and it says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait We don't like that word. Patiently for him to act. Look at somebody and say, patience, patience, patience. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you speak to us, that you allow us to understand the importance of patience this morning. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. So this morning, I'm going to speak to you a message entitled, Waiting for increase waiting for increase we've began this journey and i've got to recap a little bit because we're going to tie everything up and and close this series this morning uh we began talking about how god was wanting for this year to be the year of increase and the way that came to pass was as i was praying for a theme for 2014 uh the word more kept coming to my to my spirit and every time i would pray i was praying for more uh to to know him more to love him more to to operate in the supernatural more than we had in the years past and and things like that and so the word more kept coming to my spirit and on the new year's day we had a prayer service it was a wednesday night we had a prayer service and god began to uh operate through me in in prayer and in intercession and the word more came out and then james jones stepped up and he said uh he said he came into agreement with the word more But he added the word increase. And the word increase is the word that I was looking for. It was like I had blinders on and I couldn't think of the word increase. And so James spoke the word increase. And God shared with me at that moment, 2014 shall be the year of increase. And so I began to pray about that. I began to search out God's word. And I found in Isaiah chapter 61 where God lays out uh, his standard of increase for his people. And we know that God wants us to increase emotionally, spiritually, financially in every area of your life. God wants you to increase. I know you've heard this a lot for the last few weeks, but somebody say, God wants me to increase. Okay, so God wants to bring you emotional increase. The Bible says he wants to exchange your beauty for ashes. Uh, I'm sorry, your ashes for beauty. (laughs) And uh, some of us have more ashes than others. And um, so, but God doesn't want his people 
to walk around uh, beat up and discouraged and depressed and under oppression and things like that. But God wants his people to walk around in the victorious power of the Holy Spirit, realizing who they are, which is sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. So God wants his people to experience the the joy of their salvation. God said that he is going to exchange our mourning for a blessing. Uh, he, He wants to give you blessing for mourning. And we talked about how many of us have experienced loss in our lives, how uh, maybe you've lost a loved one, maybe you've lost uh, friends, or whether it's through passing away or moving away or whatever. But many of us uh, had experienced a lot of loss in 2013. Some of you in the years prior to that had experienced loss. But how many of you know that a time of mourning is okay? Uh, In fact, the Bible says that there's a season for that. There's a time for that. And uh, so there's a time for mourning. But how many of you know that mourning is only designed for a specific amount of time? For for a season. And uh, but what happens many times is we begin the mourning process and we make a lifestyle out of it. And uh, we walk around sorrowful, we walk around uh, in our loss, in our hurt, in our pain, and things like that. And what God is saying is he wants to take that mourning from us and he wants to replace it. He wants to bless us uh, with, with, with a new season, with a new season, and that's increase in your life. Now, uh, the Bible says this sorrow lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So here's a word that God spoke to me this morning was that he is wanting to take your morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. I'm a terrible speller, okay? Well, I think that's right. Is that right? Okay. He wants to take your morning and replace it with a M-O-R-N-I-N-G. Because the Bible says that joy comes in the morning. So he's wanting to take your time of sorrow, your time of hurt, your time of pain, and he wants to replace it with the joy that comes in the morning. So he's wanting you to experience a new morning in your life, which is an area of increase, which would cause you to experience the joy of your salvation once again. And uh, somebody say that's increase. All right. And so we talked about emotional increase. We also talked about spiritual increase, how God wants you uh, to have an increase of righteousness, how it's still his will for his church to live uh, a holy and a pleasing life. We also talked about how none of us are righteous without the grace of God. Amen. We can't earn that. We can't do enough to become righteous before God. But it's because of the grace of God that we can receive his righteousness. Somebody say receive. That means you are increasing from God. He is bringing forth righteousness into your life and he will cause you, and I promise you, if you allow him to bring forth his righteousness by his grace, then you will want to increase your standard of right living. Okay? Uh, So that's how that operates. That's how that works. And so God is wanting to bring forth righteousness within our lives, righteousness within the church, righteousness within this community Amen. And, uh, but he also wants to bring a sense of revival, a renewing, a rebuilding, a restoring of the desire and the passion that we've had in our lives to know him more, to seek him more, to serve him more. He is going to revive those things. And we talked about how revival isn't a series of services uh, necessary, but revival is simply regaining what we lost. Amen. Restoring what was lost. And so uh, God is wanting to bring an increase of revival in our life. So we're talking about increase. We're talking about how God wants to uh, bring increase into your life also financially. And uh, that's something that uh, gets kind of weird when you talk about that in church. But I'm telling you, God wants to bring an increase into your life financially. And I'm so excited to say uh, that we are seeing this happen within uh, different families within this church. Already this year, we're seeing an increase in their life. Uh, what we were told this week uh, by somebody that they had just received a raise, unexpected raise at their, at their job. Uh, somebody else 
uh, received an increase in their finances in the way of an insurance claim. Somebody else uh, received an uh, increase in their life. Uh, supernaturally, just yesterday, a family received increase. I mean, we're very excited. God is doing this, and He's doing it not because He's a respecter of persons, but He's doing that just because we've spoke it, we believe it, He said it, that settles it. Amen? And so He does it just because He can. And uh, that's the God we serve, amen? And so we're seeing this take place. We're seeing this happen. And uh, we're very excited that God is fulfilling his word already. Okay, so uh, we know that the word says in Isaiah 61 that uh, the Lord said that we would enjoy the riches of the nations. Uh, We would enjoy the wealth of people we don't even know. How, How many things that sounds pretty good? I mean, that sounds pretty good. Uh, the, the, the word in Isaiah 61 also said that he would send people to plow your fields for you and to tend your flocks. Now, I don't know if he's here. Is, is Brother Carlos here this morning? No? Sorry, Joker. Um, Wednesday, I was sitting at a table with Brother Carlos. And uh, you never know what's going to come out of Brother Carlos's mouth at all. I mean, you, you just, if, if you know Brother Carlos, you never know. It's always fun, though. It's always fun. And so uh, Brother Carlos looked at me and said, he said, Brother Pastor, he said, do you, uh, he calls me Brother Pastor, I think. Brother Pastor, he said, uh, uh, you know that scripture that says that, you know, somebody will come and, and, uh, and, and do your garden for you, you know? I can't remember how he worded it, and I said, uh, I was thinking, and then I remembered Isaiah 61. And uh, he said, do you know that somebody comes and plows my garden, plants it, tends it, and then leaves me the fruit from it? I mean, how many knows that the word of God is true? And, and it's not some methodical theory. It's not, um, it's not this, this uh, way of thinking. It is truth. And so if the Bible says that somebody is going to come plow your field for you, how many knows that somebody can come and plow your field for you? I mean, it's really happening. And so we're seeing this, and people are increasing supernaturally uh, just because God can do that. And so uh, we understand that God wants us to increase. But then the very next week, we talked about how uh, the humbling thought is that one day we get to stand before God and give an account of what we did with the increase. Okay, so it's not just fun and games, is it? It's not just, whoo, blessing and, 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 and just more and more and more and more blessing. But there's also, a, with every blessing, there's also accountability. And so uh, one day we're going to stand before God. We're going to give an account for what we have done with the increase. And the word said that uh, God would take our life and he would, he would place it into the fire. And whatever's left, we receive an inheritance for that. And um, so basically what God is going to do is he's going he's to ask you, he's going to say, uh, son or daughter, what did you do with the increase that I brought to you? And so we've got to understand that not only is God going to bring increase into our life, but we had better invest that increase wisely. Every moment that I believe God's going to increase some of your time uh, where you can spend more time with him, you know, invest that wisely. Invest, invest your resources, your time, your talent, your treasure. Invest those things wisely into the kingdom of God, not just in this church, in the kingdom. Amen. And so... There are areas where Pamela and I invest into the kingdom that has absolutely nothing to do with this church at all, you know, uh, because it's about kingdom. It's not about church. Amen. So uh, we understand that. And then last week we talked about how one of the ways that the enemy keeps us from receiving increase is by oppressing God's people and we talked about how oppressing uh, oppression is the cruel exercise of power that is meant to weigh you down and we found out that there were many of us that felt weighed down last week Uh, you know and it's so simple for him he gives you something that you weren't meant to carry and uh, it's a burden, it's stress. When you lay down at night, you can't sleep well because you're always thinking about uh, this thing that you're carrying that you weren't meant to carry. And uh, what, the, what, what the Lord wants is he wants to break the chains of oppression in God's people so that we can receive from him. Amen? And so we also talked about last week how we hold the keys, we hold the keys to free ourselves from the oppression of the enemy. 
God gave us those keys. The Bible says uh, that Christ has set us free, but now it's our responsibility to stay free. Uh, it's not just a deodorant, okay? Uh, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. You've got to stay free because the enemy is looking for ways. He's searching for ways to weigh you down. Amen? But today, we're going to finish things up so we understand that we're going to increase. Say, I'm going to increase. That's a profession of your faith. You're going to increase. Uh, you're going to invest your increase wisely. You're not going to let the enemy weigh you down. But I believe as we finish things up that one of the main things that keeps us from receiving increase into our lives is we lack the ability to wait. We lack the ability to wait. Okay, let's look at this. Let me flip through here. I did this first service too. I had notes for you and I just got wrapped up in it. All right. The world would say, get it while the getting is good. Right? How many have heard that before? Get it while the getting's good. I heard it yesterday. I was bass fishing with Tim, and uh, and and they started biting. He said, "Boy, you better get it while the getting's good," and it did. They 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 bit for you know maybe thirty minutes, an hour or something. We caught sixteen, I think, seventeen uh, bass. Um, I caught the biggest of the day, by the way. So uh, just to, I got a picture to prove it, and. Uh, <laughs> It was one of the three that I called out of the 17. And, um, <laughs> and, um, but, but he said, you better get it while it gets good. And boy, we were, we were casting, casting. Man, we were getting it. But that's a principle that the world teaches. He, the world teaches us to get it while it gets good. And how about this? If you can't afford it, no problem. That's what credit's for. Get it while the getting's good. We don't like to wait, do we? And uh, most of you tomorrow will receive something in the mail uh, from a credit card company or something that would love to increase the debt in your life because you can't wait for what you want. Hmm. Uh, there are people in this sanctuary this day who are oppressed by the enemy simply because you couldn't wait for it. It's not condemnation, it's It's truth. It's truth. There have been times in mine and Pamela's life where we have bought something on credit because we just didn't want to wait a month to get it. And uh, thank God, you know, that's not the case uh, at the moment. But we, a lot of us have done it. Teenagers don't know anything about waiting. They want it and they want it now. Right? Amen? Amen? Uh and I'll just say this, I'll just say this, some things are worth waiting for, aren't they? And, and I know that that's true uh, with teenagers, not our teenagers in Jesus' name. Because you can look at all the pregnant girls in high school and see that. Amen? And uh, I'm not going to stay on this, but some things are worth waiting for. So the world says, get it while the getting's good, but the word says... In Isaiah 40, wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. God simply wants His people to obtain the ability to wait on Him. Verse 7 in our text this morning says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. But pastor, I absolutely hate waiting. How many of you do not enjoy waiting for something? Most of us. The other day, I took my son to the dentist. And we had an appointment at 2.45. I won't say which dentist. I got there at 2.35, 10 minutes early. I was so excited. We were early for this appointment. This was at 2.35. Appointment, 2.45. At 3.45, we were still in the waiting room waiting. 
Now, we're not at a doctor's office. Nobody's coding in room three, okay? This isn't the emergency room, uh, even though how many of you have ever waited in the emergency room before? You know, it's kind of funny, emergency room and and the waiting room for the emergency. Okay, so anyway, um, but I understand that's been abused and all that kind of stuff. But this is a dentist office for crying out loud, okay? This is a dentist office. An hour and 10 minutes of sitting in the waiting room watching Dora the Explorer. There's only so much you can take. Okay? I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map, you know? I mean, it's like, it's like there's only so much you can handle, okay? And so finally, we get to go back to the room. And we wait, and we wait, and we wait. I believe it was for like 25 or 30 minutes before the hygienist ever came into the room. And, and now Seth is, is sitting in the chair, you know, nothing to do whatsoever. And the hygienist comes in and does her thing real quickly and uh, says, the dentist will be in with you in just a moment. My definition of just a moment and hers was definitely different because it was a long time before the dentist came in. And then the dentist came in looked at Seth and there was some things he was going to have to do and he said it'll be about 30 45 minutes and so we wait for 30 or 45 more minutes before the procedure is even even done and during that time the dentist and the nurse are sitting out in the hall talking about life about days when he was in dentist school. I mean, how interesting can that really be, you know? And, um, and so uh, we don't enjoy the waiting process, do we? We don't enjoy waiting on people. Uh, I know, uh, uh, well, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but we don't enjoy that waiting process. And, but how many of you know that it is essential to learn how to wait for the things of God? Okay, let's see where we're at here. Hebrews, or I'm sorry, Habakkuk 1-2 says, uh, you know, even Habakkuk had a problem with waiting. He said, how long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you don't listen. This is a man of God. This is a prophet of God. How much longer? How many of you have ever found yourself in the place of, uh, in your faith where it's like, okay, God, Really? How much longer? Really, how much longer? Look, if you have kids, you know, you know the whole, uh, are we there yet? Or our, our kids love to have their friends over, and it's, when are they going to be here? And our kids, they, they don't have that principle. We don't have that principle. Habakkuk doesn't have that principle. None of us like to wait. But God says, wait for me. Wait for me. Hebrews six twelve says, we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Uh, we want you to have faith and patience. Somebody say faith and patience. Look at somebody and say, faith's not enough. You need some patience. I just lost my iPad. I thought about uh, three different people. I'm going to wing this. Three different people who had great faith but also needed patience to see the inheritance and the promise that God had given them in their life. Okay? Number one, Noah. Uh, I was thinking about Noah and... God speaks to Noah and says, what? Build a boat, right? It's going to rain. Build a boat. But it never rained before. And, and uh, so, but Noah had faith. Amen? And Noah had faith. And so he goes and he builds the boat. Now, when we read this story, when we tell this story to our kids, we think, we think Noah, God spoke to Noah, Noah builds a boat, and the rain came. Amen? But how many of you know it took Noah somewhere around 150 years to build the boat? People lived longer back then. 150 years just to build the boat. And finally, 
after all the ridicule, after all the accusations, after all the mocking of the people who said, Noah, it's never rained before. How is the earth going to flood? And, and through all of that, for a hundred and it was somewhere around 150 years, uh, Noah is out there hammering, he's sawing, he's, he's, he's doing everything that God told him to do to build this miraculous boat. And then finally the day came when the boat was finished. Now we think that, that automatically it just happens. The rain comes, blah, blah, and it just happens. But no, seven days later, after he was finished the rain came seven days now can you imagine this the the boat is done okay god we're finished i've did what you've called me to do bring on the rain day two god where's the rain Uh, oh you heard what all those people said about me Where's the rain? Day three. Maybe something's missing. Maybe I, maybe I didn't do something just right. Yeah, and, and I was just thinking about this. I was like, how hard it must have been just to wait seven days after the thing was done. And I know the animals had to come on and, all, and, and, and everything. But look, but look, there had to be some patience to go along with Moses, or Noah's faith. Amen? And, uh, and then we think about Abraham. God said, you're going to have a son. Not this year, not next year, not next year, not next year, not next year. He didn't say when you're going to have a son. He just said, dude, you're going. In fact, he said, you're going to have inheritance as numerous as the stars. And uh, it's, it's kind of like crickets chirping after that. Well, where's the sun? And so we've all heard these stories. We've all taught these stories. Uh, many of you uh, have, have, have could quote these stories uh, till you're blue in the face. How about, how about Joseph? And God told Joseph, uh, your brothers and your family is going to bow down before you. Yes. Sounds awesome. But there was a pit and a prison and all this other stuff in between. And there was, a, there, was a, there was an element of patience that was needed to couple with faith. Amen? So faith is not enough, but it says faith and patience. That's what we need. So I believe that we have a people here at White Dove that truly believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do, that he's going to bring increase. But I want to encourage you today, have patience. Some of you will receive increase instantaneously. That's great. But I believe that those who have to wait for it are going to receive the greater blessing. And let me show you why. Real quickly, I don't know, I don't even have my iPad anymore, so we're going to go with this. How about Hebrews 6.12? Hebrews 6.12 says, We do not want you to become, oh, we already did that, lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Faith and patience. Noah, Abraham, Joseph. All right. Okay. What does waiting produce? First of all, we know that waiting produces patience. Right? Waiting produces patience. Hey, I'll just take it. Is it done? Give Chris a hand. Okay. Apparently my battery died. Waiting produces patience. And so we know that in James... 1 verse 3 it says the testing of your faith produces patience the testing of your faith produces patience now how many of you have really 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 believed for something and you thought it was going to come to pass today but you ended up having to wait for it I mean you got up you were praying you were believing God I know you're going to do this I've got the faith and it rose up within look I've been here I, I've walked in these sanctuaries on Sunday mornings and I, and I have faith God I know this is the day that your house is going to be full it's going to be over we're going to have to pull out chairs because there's nowhere for anybody to sit I know that today is the day and then it looks a little bit like it does this morning as beautifully and wonderfully as you look. You really do look good. There's a lot of empty seats, isn't there? But I have faith that one day we're going to have to 
pull out chairs because there's not anywhere for anybody to sit. Amen? Because it's God's desire that his house be full. Okay, so there are things that I'm hopeful for. I'm hopeful that, um, that uh, one day my brother and my sisters, uh, everybody is going to serve the Lord and know the Lord and, and, and be living right and be living for God and we're going to be able to come together and, and just have this Holy Ghost hoedown, you know, or, or whatever. You know, and um, I'm believing for that. How many of you are believing that your loved ones are saved? Okay, we have faith for that, but God sometimes tests our faith by, by saying, do you really believe? If you don't see it come to pass today, do you still believe? Do you still have faith? Or were you just excited in the moment? It's easy to get excited in the moment. It's easy to get excited in a church service like this, for some of you. And <laughs> it's easy. But how about when what you want doesn't come to pass? Then you're, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? But God tests your faith uh, by making you wait a little bit, and it produces patience. Now, next, I'm just going to let you guys do it. Waiting also produces endurance. Endurance. You see... If you always got what you wanted in the instant that you asked for it, what you would be is a weak Christian. You wouldn't have that endurance of going even when it gets tough. Pressing forward even when it seems like there's no way. Believing God even when it seems like everything's going the opposite direction. Uh, but waiting produces that endurance and God wants you to live a lifestyle of endurance he wants you to press forward no matter what but sometimes we he produces that through making you wait he wants you to be a strong Christian he wants you to whenever life comes against you you keep going because you have uh, he has developed endurance in your life you see Isaiah 40 verse 30 says even you grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those that some say wait or hope in the Lord will renew their strength if you're waiting on God if you're hoping in him you see hope is a powerful powerful thing in fact the Bible says that faith is the evidence of things what not seen Help me. Huh? But it's what we hope for, amen? Amen? amen. And so, <laughs> this is what happens when your stuff doesn't work, right? I guess you're all thrown off. There is an element of hope that goes along with your faith that produces the inheritance and the promises that you are longing for amen and so God is wanting to produce that uh, through endurance he's wanting you to wait on the Lord to hope in the things to come to pass yeah but what we do is we make it happen ourselves right we get weak and we make it happen ourselves and how many knows that if you make it happen yourself it never turns out as good as if you would have waited on the Lord Amen. Uh, you know, back to the debt thing. You, you can get what you want, but it's not going to be as good as it was if you would have waited because now you get to pay interest. Uh, you get to pay for it over and over and over again where if you would have just waited on the Lord, it just could have been yours. And so uh, God wants us to live a lifestyle of patience. He wants us to live a lifestyle of endurance. And uh, waiting also produces trust verse 3 of our text this morning says trust in the Lord and do good then you will live safely in the land you prosper listen if God was our genie in the bottle and we could rub and say and say oh oh God I want uh, a red uh, Mustang uh, GT okay or whatever whatever you like or I want a new bass boat, or, or uh, you know, or whatever your desire is. If you could rub it and say, God, I want this, and boom, it happened. Guess what? You didn't have to trust for it. 
You didn't have to believe him even when it didn't seem like it. You didn't have to uh, believe that his word was true. You didn't have to believe for that. And so God wants to produce trust. Also, waiting produces intimacy. Waiting produces intimacy. You see, the most important thing to God is that you get to know him and he gets to know you. It's more important than what you receive. It's more important than what you get. It's more important than anything. God simply wants to know you and for you to know him. In fact, the Bible says it like this. Psalm 37 verse 20. Three, if you go on down in our text and read, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly, and he delights in every detail of their lives. God delights. Think about this. You see yourself and all your flaws and all your failures and all the shortcomings in your life. You see yourself with all of that. And, and the word says, God delights in every detail. And when he causes you to wait, and when we choose to wait on him, he is shaping and molding the little details of your life. He's producing intimacy. He's, he's allowing you to understand him more. He's allowing you to develop patience. He's allowing you as you grow closer to him. Because sometimes, and let's talk about the really big things, the things that you really need to happen. It, it, the things that you're depending on, the things that you're, you're trusting and believing because it's a serious situation. Listen, uh, when we're waiting, how many of you know that we're spending time with God? We're asking him, we're talking to him. We're saying, oh God, I need you to intervene on my behalf. You're like the psalmist and, uh, or David who's, who's crying out from the situation. And you're, what, what's happening is you're producing intimacy. That's more valuable to God than giving you what you want. Because he's going to give you the desires of your heart. He's going to meet your needs. He's going to take care of you. He's always going to take care of you. However, uh, he may work on you a little bit along the way. Amen? And so we know that waiting on God produces many good things in our lives. Psalm 37, 34 says, Put your hope in the Lord, travel steadily along his path, and he will honor you by giving you the land listen you wait on God you trust on him you develop patience uh, you develop endurance and develop intimacy along the way and the end in the end he will give you the land you will receive what has been promised you will look it's it's not about uh, what you get it's about how you got there Amen? Because we're all promised that God is going to fulfill the desires of our heart. We're all promised that we're going to receive an inheritance. If you're under the sound of my voice, uh, you have been promised uh, increase in 2014. But God's more concerned about how you get there. Amen? He's more concerned about the process. So as we hope in the Lord, as we wait on Him, we need to understand that God is trying to develop some things in our life. Now, everybody stand. I know this is more of information and teaching this morning than, than a message, but here is what it all comes down to. Well, basically where we're at is we understand God wants to bring increase. He wants you to live in the more. He wants you to know him more. He wants you to increase in every area of your life. We know that we're accountable for that increase. We know that the enemy's trying to stop the increase. But I'm telling you that the key that will unlock increase in your life is simply the ability to wait. Heather, I'm sorry, they're not going to play. You, you'll be singing solo a cappella. Never mind, they are playing. Carry on. Yeah. It's just the day. <laughs> That's okay, though. I can have fun with it. Patience. <laughs> Olivia said, God's teaching me patience. God's wanting to bring increase to my life. Somebody say that. It's for me. Just say that. It's for me. But my prayer is that you won't make it happen. You won't formulate a plan to make it happen. You won't cause it to happen on your own power because the kind of increase that God is wanting to bring is supernatural. It's supernatural. Listen, uh, one of the greatest things that we have 
uh, seen happen over the last few weeks is that people have been coming to us or when we meet with people, we're hearing things like, have I told you about what God has done for me? Have I told you about how God did this for me, for my finances, for my family? Have I told you how? And listen, that is an increase of praise. That is an increase of of God receiving glory. God is wanting to bring increase into your life so that you'll talk about it. Amen? Because the world knows about God. I mean, really, Magnolia knows about God. There are enough churches in this city. Magnolia knows about God. But what Magnolia needs to hear is what God has done for you. So God is wanting to bring increase to your life so that you can praise His name, so that you can give glory to Him, and and people can see that the God we serve is real. It's not just somebody we sing about. It's not somebody that we read about. It's not some methodical thing. He is a real person who is fighting for us, not against us, who is wanting to bring increase into your life. But we just got to wait. Just wait. Sometimes we just got to wait. Not all the time, thank goodness. But sometimes we've got to wait. So I believe the word to you this morning is simply learn to just be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. How many believes He's going to do some good things? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, this morning, God, I pray for your people. Lord, I know without a doubt in my mind that you're wanting to bring increase into their lives, into this church, into this community. Lord, the word says that we won't only be blessed, but our land will receive an increase. And so, God, I believe for an increase in Magnolia, in the surrounding area, in this region, God, you have said that we are to be a regional distribution center, Lord God. So I believe for the region that we will receive an increase. But God, I pray that you will develop this powerful act of learning how to wait on you. Just how to be still. How to allow you to do what you want to do. God, I pray that we won't try to get it while the getting's good. Lord, we won't try to make things happen. We won't try to uh, do things in order to manipulate manipulate your will uh, for our lives, Lord God, but we will just wait patiently for you. God, help us to learn how to just relax. Be still. Trust you. Believe you even when we're waiting. And God, I thank you for that. We praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said?